Greetings, this is Tim. Welcome back to the channel. A couple weeks ago, I did a comparison of various PLA filaments on the AcreMate M5. And I decided I'm going to do a part two because I got my AcreMate PLA filament in and I want to do the same comparison. But I'm also going to add this week Ender eSun and Polymaker's Polylite PLA Pro in preline. But before I get into that comparison, I wanted to share something with you. Last time, the Tech Bears, the Sun Lu, and any cubic filaments did not fare so well. So the philosophy behind these videos are that the Anchor Make M5 is being sold as more or less an out-of-the-box printer that you shouldn't have to tweak. The slicer comes with this easy setting. So my goal has been to follow that premise that I'm just using the easy setting and the Anchor Make slicer and I'm making a benchy. That's all it is. I received a lot of feedback that my printer wasn't set right, that they've the commenter had lots of luck with such and such a filament. I'm just sharing my experience. Your experience will vary. There are so many variables to consider. But I did go back just to prove the point, and I reprinted the Tech Bears again. And the, the initial print failed, but again, I was using easy settings. Once I went in and tweaked the settings on the slicer, I got much better results. In the Tech Bear, which was the worst example, did not finish, uh, I now have an excellent print. Uh, I slowed the printer speed. I tried several retraction speeds and distances, and I got a very ideal result. There's no defects in the bow. The details on the stern and bottom improved. Layers are almost invisible on the hull. So I did the same with the Sun Lu, which had very large voids in the filament in the hull when I printed it. And eliminated those almost completely, well, eliminated the voids completely. But there are still defects in the bow and, but the overall model is well formed and there was no stringing. And I did the same with any cubic, much better print. But I found it interesting that the defect that we see frequently on the bow was eliminated in the tech pairs. But with the same tweaks, the Sun Lu and any cubic still have some level of defect on the bow in the same place. So what defects do I look for? I've come to the point that on the anchor make in the easy settings we see a very consistent set of defects. The defects are pretty consistent on almost any print regardless of the filament used. Uh, and this is again using the easy slicer settings. So on this graphic you get defect A, and that's the portal window. Sometimes you will get a little droop there, um, but you also see some, the, the frame of the portal is not as well formed on the aft side of the window. You get these bumps on the front, on the bow, and that's B and C on this diagram. You also get the layer separation or the, the ability to distinguish layers in the hull. And then here at D, at the beginning of these overhangs, you tend to get blobs on the anchor make. E, where the flag goes, the top tends to be uh, rough and poorly formed. F is the layers are again visible in the cab. And the G is the door frame and overhangs. Sometimes you get sagging, like we saw in the TPU. Stringers or loops are common here. And then H, you get the seam on the one side of the ship where the 
extruder head has picked up and left a dollop of filament. Uh, other things we look at are the, or I look at, are the bow details, I, and the bottom details, J. So, how did the anchor make fare? The anchor make filament, first off, is very pale in color. It's not a real good white. Um, it's, it's not quite translucent, um, but it's not a real good white color. Uh, there were stringers, or stringing, in the bow and the doorways. The portals and doors were well formed, but the roof is just slightly curved, and I've not seen that on any of the models. And it's barely perceptible, but when I rub my finger across the roof of the Anchor Make print, it's quite visible or quite noticeable. As far as the Ender, um, it's it's more of a true white color, and uh, maybe a little bit of yellow. But it's it's mostly a true light color. Um, very standard defects, nothing unusual. And, and that's the point. We want to be consistent in what we're seeing. That means the printer is being consistent. If we're going to have defects, we want to have the same defects in the same places. So when we go to tweak our slicer settings for that filament, we know, we know we're going to get a consistent resolution to those defects. The eSun I find the color fascinating. It's a very bright white color, but it's got a touch of blue on it. And it's interesting when the models are sitting out on the counter, uh, this one stands out. The, the color is just, it's more bluish white. Um, kind of reminds me of a daylight light bulb in my workshop. Um, but the layers seem to be more visible than what we saw on some of the other printers. But other than that, the defects seem to be very similar. And then we've got the Polymaker Polylight PLA Pro. The color is similar to the Ender. A little bit of a loop in the doorway. Other than that, there's not really any defects. Now on the pre-line... The color is another interesting color in that it's it's a little bit grayish. Um, there's a little bit of a loop in one of the doorways just starting. It's it's not very pronounced, um, but the defects are the same defects we've seen everywhere else. As for my th final thoughts, the Anchor Make filament at fifty to eight dollars for two kilograms is overpriced. It doesn't bring anything exceptional to the value proposition, and there's been a lot of talk on Discord about issues, poorly wound, overwound, uh, tangled, uh, and in fact, I haven't even received my original order yet. Well, others have, so I don't know what's going on with them. The Ender is $23.99. It's frequently on sale for $19.99. It's a good filament. I wouldn't walk past it. Um, you know, I, I'm trying to look right around that $20 price as being my max. Anything below that, I really am trying to find the better value. Um, the eSun is also a very good filament for $19.99. And the Polymaker Poly Light Pro is $24.99. It's a good filament. I even printed a 144th scale Antonov AN125 for buddy who collects them. But it, it, the details were great. But I'm not sure it's worth the extra $5 over the standard Polymaker PLA. I, I haven't seen enough of it. Um, and while I continue to use the Hatchbox as my standard go-to fast and easy prints, I will use the rest of these prints, so the rest of these filaments. I will tweak, I will learn, I will try new things. And in fact, I've been using the Tech Bears to print these little trash cans. And I've been giving them away to people who are new to 3D printing. Uh, this done in face mode. It takes about 15 minutes to print this little trash can. Um, and it turns out very good. Um, so I'm, 
I, I like the Tech Bears. Once it's tweaked, it's not bad. And for $13.99 for a kilogram, it's an excellent value. So I would pick it up if you're seeing it. Um, and I did see it this week for $9.99, which would make a tremendous uh, useful uh, filament at a great value. Um, as for the rest of the filament in the overall scheme, what would I look for? Um, I would still stick with the Hatchbox, uh, particularly if it's on sale for $19.99. That is my go-to. It just works. I don't need to mess with things. My next choice is the Inland. Uh, occasionally I'll see it on sale for as low as $14.99. And then the Overture Mat at $15.99. I think it's a good value. <clears throat> but all of these are can be used. Um, I would still stay away from the Sun Lu and the Any Cubic. They they could be tweaked, but even once tweaked, they still had some minor defects. The Tech Bear has gone up on my list, um, and I'll keep you updated if I find anything else that is a substantial value or improvement. But with that, have a wonderful day. Enjoy your weekend. I'll talk to you next time.